Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk Ray Bradbury. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do. So here on Let's Talk Ray Bradbury, we are very slowly and methodically working through the collection of these stories of Ray Bradbury. We are up to story number 66 of 100 and also um, Ray Bradbury review of, of 166 out of a potential 200. Uh, and today's story is And So Died Rybuchinska from 1953. Uh, brief synopsis, a group of people are gathered um, over the dead body of Mr. Ockham in the basement of a theater. There is a golden box on the table containing Rybuchinska, the famous ventriloquist doll of the artist Fabian. Also present are Alice, Fabian's wife, Mr. Douglas, who is his press agent, and uh, Krovich, who is a detective. The female doll, Rybuchinska, uh, keeps talking and joking from inside the box, uh, but she's not alive. Uh, Fabian simply cannot resist himself, and uh, eventually he convinces Krovich, the, uh, the detective, to allow him to uh, bring her out of the box because um, he says, I won't be able to keep silent because she's part of me. I can't always shut her up. Uh, Krovich theorizes that Alice and Douglas had an affair and that Occam was threatening to tell Fabian if one of them didn't pay uh, him off. Uh, but Douglas ensures the, uh, the, uh, the detective that uh, Fabian knew all about their relationship. Um, uh, it seems that uh, Fabian is so obsessive about his, uh, his dolls, his ventriloquist dolls, that he basically shows them more attention uh, then he does his wife, and uh, Alice admits to being having become jealous of all the money he was spending on the doll and all the time with her, and how cold he is to her. That um, he basically uh, he she looked to to Douglas for for attention and love that was missing from her relationship with Fabian. On another day, uh, Krovich uh, he pulls Fabian aside and talks to him again. Uh, in his investigating, he discovers that. Uh, Fabian used to have another act, and uh, his assistant at the time looked eerily familiar to the doll, Rybuchinska. Uh, he discovers that she was, in fact, based on a real person. At this point, uh, Fabian sort of spills the beans. Uh, he, he, he reveals that uh, Rybuchinska is, in fact, uh, based on a, his former assistant, who he fell in love with, and... Uh, they talk back and forth. Sometimes Rabichinska's talking, sometimes Fabian's talking. But we find out that Fabian taught or treated uh, his assistant very, very poorly, and eventually she left him. Uh, he looked and looked and couldn't find her, but eventually he uh, settled upon the the idea of getting the finest piece of wood he can find and carving a doll based on her. And he did. And as he did it, slowly uh, his previous doll, um, Sweet William. Uh, sort of faded from his his consciousness. He was no longer talking. Sort of went silent and dead. But then the the lips of uh, Rebuchinska moved and became alive and became a part of him uh, up until the present. It's at this point that um, we find out that Akam was threatening to reveal to the world that uh, Rebuchinska was in fact based on a real person, um, and it was not sort of solely the, sort of the creation of of Fabian. Uh, and then uh, Rybuchinska basically says uh, that, you know, I've lived with all of your lies and your hatred over the years and your mistreatment, uh, but I can't live with somebody who kills. And at that point, uh, her words leave his lips. He used to be able to search in his mind and sort of find her where she is, and he can no longer do that. This part of him is dead. And there you have it. Um... <laughs> It's an interesting little tale. I, I think, although it's spelled differently, I, it seems obvious to me that the victim being called Occam is a reference to Occam's razor, the idea that you know the simplest explanation is probably the right one. Uh, and, and what Bradbury does so well is, he, with Bradbury, you expect it to be a supernatural thing. Uh, you expect that this, this doll should be alive and capable of murder. But no, in fact... Um, Fabian is, if anything, mentally ill, um, but he's definitely obsessive, and he sort of develops this personality within him. He channels it through the doll, and in fact, uh, he himself was the murderer. Um, but I love the idea that it has the story has the trappings of what could have been like 
the the Annabelle movies of recent days, um, but instead, no, it's it's actually a more uh, personal sort of character driven story. Um, you know, so Fabian is mentally ill, if anything, but he's also a murderer. Um, he's he's willing to uh, to kill to uh, sort of cover up this revelation about who the doll really is. It's not exactly clear to me whether whether Fabian killed the original, um, his original assistant, uh, who he based the doll off of. It didn't seem obvious to me in the story. Maybe I missed something, but I don't. I don't think that's the case. I think. Um, I think. She, it probably makes more sense. It's less impactful, but it might make more sense if if she left him, um, because then it brings up, it fits into dovetails into the end, which is, you know, you create this doll, which theoretically can never leave you because it's an inanimate object. But no, um, Rybachinska actually leaves him, and uh, her words sort of become silent in his lips, and he can no longer go to that place in his head where she was. Um, because uh, he, he, originally he was bad to her, lies and mistreatment and abuse, but um, it's as if he's admitting to himself, Fabian's admitting to himself, but he finally did something so bad that um, the real, um, that would justify the real Rybachinska's leaving him, and that is murder, and she says as much that, you know, I, can no, I, can't, I can't live with somebody who kills and that sort of brings the, the story to an abrupt end. I, I think, um, on the whole, it's a really good story. Um, Bradbury's very, very good at doing this, just cleverly taking uh, puns and cliches and things and turning them on themselves, making them literal as well. Uh, and he does that very, very, very well here, this idea that the simplest explanation is the true one. Um, it, was, it was no elaborate... Um, murder plot. It was, in fact, he just did it um, because of the sickness he has. At the same time, if the story does have one weakness, I feel like um, when uh, when Krovich is interrogating Fabian, he seems to um, very abruptly dump the truth, both through his words and also through um, his words as Rebichinska. I think it, it feels a little bit abrupt. And I think that is the weakness in this story. Um, this, I think it is a short story, but it could have been a longer short story and been a little bit more impactful for it. It just seems like about midway through the story or maybe a little bit past midway, uh, there's a break we jump forward to, but it's possibly the next day or a few days later when when a detective comes back with his revelation, you know, but what he's uncovered with his research. And then suddenly uh, Fabian spills the beans on the whole thing and I, I just feel a little bit too abrupt for me a little bit not quite earned as well as it could have been not completely unearned but again a little bit abrupt a little bit um cheated it seems like um Bradbury probably could have done this one a little bit better justice with a few more pages um but that's that yeah um decent story uh, not one of the best ones of the of the collection as far as execution goes, but it is one of the better ideas, even if it, it falls short of sort of achieving what it sets out to do. All right, so uh, moving on, next time we'll be looking at Boys Raise Giant Mushrooms in Your Cellar from 1962, which will be story number 67 of 100 in this collection. As we continue to um, rip through it and eventually here wind it down later this year, and then we'll move on to something different here on Let's Talk. But thanks for tuning in, and until next time, Keep it creepy.